Hey guys, how's it going? Kapiran here. So seeing as yesterday I made a video uh, that kind of, you know, screwed over some guy's strategy to winning a ladder race, he's already far enough ahead that it doesn't actually matter at all at this point. But uh, out of curiosity, I want to show you guys the other side of the issue, the, um, the side that I play. I, you know, I play to try to get the top experience um, and, you know, sometimes I die doing it, but every time it's quite a lot of fun because it's, you know, it's pretty competitive. You know, I, I care if I'm the number one Templar uh, when I do play, but because my strategy going in isn't always the same, isn't always, you know, set in stone, um, you yeah, know, I've learned quite a few things that I can share with you guys and, uh, you know, you guys can see a good example of what, it, where I have come uh, with my character to win a lot of these races. I did win the last one. I did like an insane comeback largely because uh, my character was extremely effective in the end uh, farming zone. So this character is built for a two or three hour race. In a one hour race you don't want to do this type of character. This is a Templar that uses cleave and uh, I went for inner force this time but that's not necessarily the case. You don't have to do that and uh, basically you get two one-handers that hopefully uh, if they don't have elemental damage are at least very fast. You know, I had terrible gear uh, when I did this run. Uh, very bad RNG, but it picked up in the end, and that's really why I won. So you get, you know, two fast one-handers, and when you use cleave, as you are f if you're familiar with elemental cleave, the damage that you have from elemental sources outside of your weapons, so let's say like the ring, you know, 47 fire, that applies twice because it's, it applies to each weapon and as do the auras, that's why they're so important and that's why I do such insane damage for a three hour race. So, you know, it's 700 DPS with this kind of damage I'm one-shotting most of the mobs and docks and that's a pretty impressive thing to do considering this was a solo three hour race character. Now, um, you know, the first time I did this build I did it for lulls and I ended up doing it fine. The second time, uh, you don't realize that gear is really hard to get for elemental cleave early on so I failed miserably. And uh, I try to show you guys kind of how I progress this character. So this character, um, I start as Templar, of course, but I can't have the right gems. So the primary gems that uh, I use are Cleave and Dual Strike. So with Dual Strike uh, and Cleave, I don't get either of those as a Templar. So what I do is I make a Duelist and then move the gems, because Dual Strike uh, is uh, the gem that you get from uh, killing Hillock and Cleave is the gem you get to start out with a duelist. So you kill Hillock, you get dual strike and uh, you can buy a second coral ring or you can just pass on the wisdom scrolls and the one mana and one health potion to your Templar which is what I did. And uh, you know then it gets started uh, as Templar and you pick the Frost Nova. You're actually a Frost Nova Templar. So you start with mana regen, elemental damage, area, area, area and then int 8% life, 12% life, 30 life. If you have discipline and training, you can go and kill um, Brutus. Uh, for the quest rewards at the beginning, you want to pick up Fireball, because with Fireball you can actually kill Brutus without getting hit by him too much. So you want to pick up Fireball, and that's all you really need. You get the Frost Nova and you get the Fireball, you don't need anything else. You can kill Brutus. Uh, at that point, after you kill Brutus, um, you get Anger. Anger is the aura that adds fire damage, and at that point, if you have like one of either uh, a dexterity amulet with elemental damage, any kind of ring with elemental damage, gloves with elemental damage, or two weapons that have elemental damage. If you have any of those, you can go elemental cleave. In my case, I didn't. I had none of those at that point. But what Brutus did drop is a mallet. And uh, this is one of the best mallets that can possibly drop off a of Brutus. So I took advantage of it. I went back and one of the quest rewards that I didn't take was Sweep. So I took Sweep. Ended up getting Sweep um, and got to level 12 using Ice Nova. Kept the build the same. I ended up going Life and then Elemental Damage Catalyze because that's what I would do if I was Cleave and I was hoping to transition into Cleave at any time that I got any one of the drops. And uh, I didn't. So I used Sweep Glacial Hammer all the way up to Western Forest clearing in Act 2. Killed Merville with Glacial Hammer. You know, it wasn't that bad because my weapon was pretty good. But in Western Forest, it started to really suck. And fortunately, by the time I was like level 20, I actually had like uh, enough damage from the auras themselves 
to use Elemental Cleave. And my damage was pretty poor because I had two physical one-handers. I had pretty much nothing on my gear. Pretty much the worst possible luck you can get, but it still kind of worked. Uh, you have to keep in mind that after you get Catalyze, you should be getting the Dexterity node unless you have good weapons. If you have good weapons, you may not need the Dexterity node right away. But if you don't have any weapons, you want to keep the weapon pool uh, pretty large that you can use. So you can get Precision, and then you probably should get Fitness so you can get more life so it's easier for you to play through the game. After fitness, you'd want to get Celestial Walker, and you'd probably get all this shit and fitness and hit Celestial Walker right before hitting Ball. Now, the part that gets fairly easy is um, when you get uh, Wrath Aura. When you do Chamber of Sins, you get Wrath Aura in addition to Anger Aura. The main problem is having enough mana to keep them both up. So, you know, something I prioritize um, is gear with mana on it, because you need mana. So, uh, once you get your two auras up, your gear doesn't really matter anymore, but getting to that point can be very difficult. You know, up to this point, I've made a caster Templar, transition into a sweep two-handed Templar, transition into a physical cleave, transition into elemental cleave with auras stacking mana. You know, all this in, I'm at like the one, one hour, 20 minute mark in a race. You micromanage so much gear, so this is not something that you, you guys may be able to uh, do for the first time around. It takes a lot of practice, but just as an idea, so you can see what I'm doing, uh, hopefully this is useful. But yeah, you can kill Vol. Um, for your second support gem, you get Added Lightning, and you can use Added Lightning on your Dual Strike to increase your Dual Strike so it does marginally more than your Cleave, but because uh, you know it's single target, it's a little bit easier to use than Cleave. So you can kill Vol with Dual Strike using Added Lightning, uh, fairly easily. After that point you get to Act 3 and there comes the big decision. The big decision is here. So you get Celestial Walker, then you get 10 Int, and from this point you pretty much decide which way you're going. If you have a really good gear, uh, as in um, you know, lots of gear with Elemental on it, instead of going to Inner Force, you're going to go through the Mana Talent, Mana Talent, 30 Int, and then Lightning, 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 Elementalist. And the reason you're going to do that is because if you have enough uh, elemental damage from your gear, the amount from the auras is marginal. So boosting the auras doesn't matter as much as boosting the amount on your gear. And the reason you get the mana talents and the savant is because you're going to want to use your added lightning in conjunction with cleave weapon elemental. You know, this is more likely to happen in party races where there's more gear that drops and you can, you know, more conveniently assemble your character during the given time frame. But if you're able to do this um, successfully, you can reach, uh, in my personal highest uh, DPS was 1200 cleave. And that was in a three player party or a four player party, I don't remember exactly. But you can get some crazy numbers and you know this character really starts to get strong at the end of Act 2 and is a monster in Act 3. So that's really the goal and uh, so far it's been proven pretty well. Uh, pretty much had the shittiest possible gear imaginable up until like the two and a half hour mark in the last race and somehow I ended up winning number one overall uh, even to my surprise. So as you can see the build does matter a lot but you know just having the general knowledge of the game, the general uh, experience with races and how they function uh, is the other side of it. That uh, you know if you plan to win you really should be trying these races and practicing and you know doing your best each time hopefully get out those wins. Hopefully you guys learned a few things from my, uh, you know, showing of my race character, at least up until this point, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.